We have all heard recently about the unfortunate disaster that occurred to the submersible Titan that was on a trip to explore the wreckage of the Titanic. The main cause of the incident was the extremely high water pressure at depth, and unfortunately, the submarine structure could not withstand this level of pressure, which led to its implosion. However, in the shadow of this catastrophe, a question arises. How do deep sea fish survive the extreme pressure? But before we begin, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to receive our videos regularly. The issue with any object underwater pressure does not depend on the material the object is made of, but rather on the amount of air or gases inside the body. The deeper a body goes underwater, the more it experiences discomfort in the ears, sinuses, and joints. This is because each of these body parts contains a quantity of air, and in this situation, the air pressure inside them is much lower than the water pressure surrounding them. Every 10 feet of descent increases the water pressure by one atmospheric pressure unit. So if we assume someone descends to a depth of 500 hundred feet below the sea surface, the water pressure acting on their body would be equivalent to a polar bear standing on a small coin. Now imagine if we were to go one or two miles deep underwater. In this case, the body could literally explode due to the extreme force generated by the water pressure as the water tries to infiltrate the body. By the way, if we assume that someone descends to this depth and has an oxygen tank with them, they could still encounter problems because even the oxygen tanks can implode quite easily under the immense water pressure at great depths. This is precisely the problem faced by all divers and submarines in general. Therefore, submarine manufacturers are always concerned with how to prevent water pressure from penetrating the outer structure of the submarine. It doesn't mean that the ocean is inhabited by fish and marine creatures that can all go to the ocean floor, as you heard. Not every fish decides to take a trip to the ocean ocean floor and return, even fish are affected by the pressure. This is because a large percentage of fish, especially bony fish, have something called a swim bladder or an air bladder. It is a sac-like structure with two chambers that helps the fish ascend or descend in the water. When a fish wants to float upward, the bladder inflates, and when it wants to sink, the bladder deflates. This is why fish of this type tend to stay within a certain range in the ocean, and they don't venture too far from it. Otherwise, their bladder could burst, and this would cause the fish physiological problems that could lead to their death. So, are there any fish at the bottom of the ocean? Sure. The fish you might see at the bottom of the ocean fall into two categories. The first category includes fish that don't have swim bladders at all, so there's no air inside them. An example of this is the Mariana snailfish, which lives in the Mariana Trench at depths ranging from 7,000 meters to 8,000 meters below the sea surface, making it the deepest point on Earth. As for the second category of marine creatures you encounter at great depths below the sea surface, which is actually quite fascinating, it includes creatures like sperm whales and beaked whales, such as the Cuvier's beaked whale and some other species of whales. These creatures belong to the cetacean group and have lungs, sinuses, and nasal pouches, which means their bodies are filled with air. So how do they cope with the pressure? First, when these whales descend into the deep ocean regions, they expel all the air from their lungs and sinuses. Then, they use hemoglobin and myoglobin to store oxygen in their bodies, so they don't need to breathe from their lungs for an extended period. Additionally, the veins in their noses and the cavities in their ears expand and contract to fill the empty spaces in their bodies with water, effectively eliminating all the air voids before they dive. This allows them to adapt to the intense pressure at depth. As a result, some whales and beaked whales can reach depths exceeding 3,000 meters below the sea surface, making it possible for them to access regions where the wreckage of the Titanic lies. They can do this and resurface with ease. However, even these remarkable creatures have their depth limits, and they cannot go much deeper. On the other hand, there are organisms that can surpass these limits by far, such as the Mariana snailfish. In some parts of the Mariana Trench, the pressure can reach up to 1080 bars. To give you an idea, imagine someone carrying the weight of 100 foot fully grown African elephants on their head. This is a mind-boggling fact that has puzzled researchers. How can there be living creatures capable of surviving in such extreme conditions? When they examined the Mariana snailfish and studied its anatomical features, they found that it had gaps in its skull, meaning its skull is not closed like ours. Consequently, this allows it to balance the internal and external pressure more effectively. Additionally, the fish's body is filled with a gel-like substance rather than air, which further contributes to its buoyancy and ability to withstand pressure. What's even more intriguing is that instead of bones, the Mariana snailfish has cartilage, which makes its body more flexible and capable of withstanding greater pressure. Moreover, there is a substance called trimethylamine oxide, 
TMAO, which is responsible for the distinctive odor of fish that we commonly refer to as the fishy smell. However, the actual function of TMAO is not to create an odor, but to preserve the protein in the fish's body. Many marine creatures have their own version of this substance in their specific genetic makeup. In the case of deep sea fish, they have five different versions of TMAO, which significantly enhances the protection of their proteins under extreme pressure. This allows the fish's biological processes to function normally under such conditions. It's truly amazing how these deep sea creatures have adapted to survive in these harsh environments. If we were to consider the size of the Mariana snailfish, we would find that it measures between 11 inches from head to tail and weighs around 160 grams. This is quite small, about the size of one's hand, yet it can withstand conditions and pressures that metal submarines designed for the purpose struggle to endure. Even in the Mariana Trench, it's home to unique aquatic life and mud volcanoes it has something called the Hadal Zone, which is one of the least explored habitats on Earth. At bone-crushing depths with no sunlight, it was long thought that nothing could survive there. But that belief has been dispelled. Even at the very bottom, life exists. In 2005, tiny single-celled organisms called foraminifera, a type of plankton, were discovered in the Challenger Deep, according to NOAA. Discoveries at the Challenger Deep have included colorful rocky outcrops and bottom-dwelling sea cucumbers. A series of undersea mud volcanoes and hydrothermal vents in the Mariana Trench also support unusual life forms, according to NOAA. Despite the highly acidic and infernally hot water produced by hydrothermal vents in mud volcanoes, exotic species and microscopic organisms there are able to survive. In the absence of sunlight, the creatures instead benefit from the nutrient-rich waters belched out from hydrothermal vents the life-supporting medium results from chemical reactions between the seawater and magma rising from beneath the ocean floor. The ocean floor remains one of the most mysterious places in the universe. In fact, we have better maps of the Moon and Mars than we do of our own planet, Feldman previously told CNN. Though people have been exploring the ocean's surface for tens of thousands of years, only about 20% of the seafloor has been mapped, according to 2022 figures from No Way A. Given high interest in the Mariana Trench, however, researchers have made several efforts to give increasingly detailed pictures of its features. But that's not easy. Due to the vastness and deepness of the bottommost ocean zone, scientists must rely on sonar or acoustic technology to attempt to give a full picture of what's below. So have we covered everything? To all of you who made it this far, you're amazing. Please give us a like before you leave so we know how many of you reached the end. And don't forget, if you have any questions that come to mind later, feel free to write them in the comments below. Many of the episodes we create these days are inspired by your questions and comments. Peace, and thank you.